What's up, internet? I'm back. It's 2021. We got no time for complicated lighting setups. Oops. So, this is the 2021 self-tape setup video that you didn't know you needed. Right here. Probably not alone here. Uh, 2020 was hard. Um, had a lot of ambitions to make a video every week for a year. That didn't happen, but that's okay. We're back here now. The biggest change that occurred for me in 2020 was that I got way less precious about this whole process of making tapes. I was in an acting class, w which was every single week, so I was making videos all the time, and I was lucky enough to get some auditions, none of which I booked. So, it was a long year. And what I learned from a long year of not getting jobs is that it just needs to be good enough, right? It just needs to be passable. It can't be bad. If you're in a bad environment or something that is like, not usable for the casting director, then you've lost. So you don't necessarily have to be winning cinematography awards, uh, although I do have some friends who have done pretty uh, out there self-tapes and like booked jobs that way. For me, it became more about, okay, how can I speed up my setup? How can I get this tape together as soon as possible and get this thing together and spend the most amount of time either prepping the audition or doing the audition and not spending 45 minutes setting up my lights or my backdrop or any of that fancy shit because that doesn't matter. So this is what we've come up with. Number one, this backdrop is the still the best investment, still the best thing that I've ever bought for my self tapes. I use it all the time. I'm able to travel it. I have taken it all over the country with me. I've done auditions in basements, cinder block basements with no lighting that would be super spooky to do an audition in, usually, but isn't because, you know, I was able to mask it, at least to an extent. Someone in the comments asked me why the background needs to be blue. Now, there's a couple of reasons that I've come up with for why that's the case, but number one is that that's what it's gonna look like if you go into an audition in a casting office. And while most of 2020, everyone knew we were filming from home, everyone knew we were self-taping. As we go back into whatever normal looks like, you're gonna wanna blend in with the people who are going into the casting office. Um, you want the producers to just look at your performance. You don't want the producers to be like, what's going on there? Why are they here? Why are they there? Why are they, why is the background yellow? Uh, you know what I mean? Those kinds of things tend to distract. And personally, I would rather my performance be the thing that stands out or my take on the character be the thing that stands out, not my background color choice. The other reason why I think it's blue is because if you look at a color wheel, our skin tones all fall along this one line on the color wheel. No matter your ethnicity or place of origin or skin color, black, white. The hues of our skin live on this line and it's just different um, brightness and different saturation, which I think is kind of nice. It's unifying, you know, it's very precious. And on the opposite side of that is this blue color. It's kind of more like teal but um, chroma blue is, is pretty contrasty to that, so you, it separates you from the background. It allows you to be the focus of the scene, as opposed to like somebody with white skin using a white wall. It's always, not often, like you kind of can blend into the wall, or you get these really weird shadows that are distracting, those kind of things, so. Gray is fine. Um, other colors of blue, I've always talked about the seamless paper as opposed to this uh, cloth pop-up backdrop works fine. I've used seamless paper before. The first time I shot this video, actually, I was using the seamless paper. 
and that stuff's great. And it's also really good in gray. And other than that, I wouldn't like get too crazy. Um, but you know, this is all about kind of what you want to do with everything. So choose your own destiny. Number two, uh, let's talk about lighting. I have drastically decreased my commitment to how complicated lighting needs to be. Because again, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be in a, a room now. I have an office and it has windows in front of me and it has windows over here. And if it's a sunny day, I mean, depending on the time of day, sometimes the light can, uh, the direction of the light is a bit strange. It can look like it's coming below and shining up, which is never very flattering. You always want the light to be above your head as you see here, but I've never wanted to set up this fancy uh, light dome or anything like that for these tapes anymore. It just takes so long and it's so cumbersome that I have to break it down. And so this is what I've uh, upgraded to, or I should say, this is what I've simplified to. This is the Godox LED P260C. It is a very simple 20 inch by 12 inch panel, light panel, um, that is probably designed for streamers. I find it works really well um, stationed just sort of above my computer desk for whenever I have a Zoom call, I can just flick it on, um, get some directional light on my Zoom calls. But it's also really, really convenient and easy for self tapes. There's some simple buttons in the back, um, you know, it can be battery operated. It plugs right into the wall. It's not excessively bright. This isn't the kind of thing that could supplement an actual film light, but for the purposes of self tapes, it's perfect. It's small, it's compact, it's light, it's easy to use. It gives you a directional light and it's not a ring light because we still don't support ring lights on this channel. Okay, so this will make it so that you don't have a circular ring in your eyes. It's gonna be great. You're gonna look a lot more like a human being. And that's all I have to say about that. So then the other thing that I've done now more recently is I have stopped using my DSLR that I shoot these videos on for my self tapes. For, for most situations, I don't appreciate, I don't enjoy the uh, question marks about an SLR. People on the channel always ask me, yeah, but your videos look so good. Why, why wouldn't I want my self tapes to look like that? And the only thing I can say is, you don't know that I have had to film this video three or four times because the settings weren't totally right or the autofocus wasn't perfect. There's only a handful of cameras that are easy enough to use with really good autofocus that would make good self tape cameras. But if, if you're not interested in video or in photography as a hobby, do not spend your money on an, on an SLR. Spend your money on acting class and buy the other stuff. Spend the $250 or whatever it is for the full kit and just do that because it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. They, they don't care. They want to see good work. They don't care if you're shooting on a Sony and the background's blurry. That doesn't matter. So I've, I've upgraded my iPhone to the 12 Pro Max. I needed a new number for um, my side hustle and it, it's awesome. I mean, if you have an iPhone 10, it might be time to upgrade. My 10 does not look as good as this 12 Pro Max, um, but any of the 12s, any of the 12 Pros, any of these new phones are more than you need. In fact, I usually end up having to bring the, the file into my computer and make it smaller because the file size is too large and it's too advanced for sending to casting directors. They literally won't take it. So with my 12 Pro Max, I have this little uh, Ulanzi iPhone what are these called? Someone help me. Help me. No one's here. This is a tripod phone mount. What's cool about it is that it has a hot shoe mount on the top. And so uh, one of my clients used this Rode Video Micro microphone that, that sits on this Lyre shock mount. And that uh, is cold shoe mount adapted. So it can go right on the top of this uh, phone tripod mount. And then with a little bit of creative problem solving, 
we can use this microphone, which is really meant for a DSLR on our iPhones. So the key to that is, and you'll see this uh, in the product descriptions in my uh, descriptions below. Think of it like headphones. If you have headphones without the microphone, they have basically uh, two wires going into the phone and they can get kind of two sources of information. But if you also add the microphone part, then they have these three sources of information which come out of the wire and go into the phone. And you need to switch this microphone cable from the two sources of information to the three sources of information. Uh, and then of course, you need your handy dandy dongle to uh, plug that into the new iPhones. And you're good to go. What's cool about the um, this Ulanzi mount is that it just goes right on a light stand. So we have the one light, we have two light stands, we have the phone mount, the video micro, and our phone. That's it. Not two lights, not three lights. One light, phone mount, microphone, backdrop. Simple, fast, easy, repeatable. Break it all down in 14 seconds. You know, my other setup, I would gotten down to 10 minutes. Even that's too long. I don't want to, I don't want to do this for 10 minutes. It makes me not want to do it. So now we're going to go fast, dirty, and quick. And um, that is the self-tape setup for 2021. As always, you can get any of the stuff that I talk about in these videos in my comment section below, or send me a message, and I will put together some special stuff for you. I've, I've been kind of helping people shop for tech and for camera gear and video gear who don't necessarily know what they're doing quite yet, and uh, that's been fun. So definitely reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please uh, subscribe. Uh, think about sending a, hitting that like button. Send me a comment if you have any questions.